Hello, welcome back to the Board Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a 2011 classic civilization card drafting game by Antoine Bowser. We're going to be talking about Seven Wonders. And in this video, we'll be giving you a rough overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like, what we don't like, and then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not Seven Wonders is still worth playing in 2019 and beyond. So if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to our channel. Leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you after this. Board games. So, Seven Wonders, how did you play this game? So, Seven Wonders is played over three ages. Beginning of each age, everybody is dealt a hand of seven cards. And what you'll do during a turn, you will play a card and then you will pass the rest on to the player on your left and then right and then left. So, the round ends after five cards have been played. And playing a card gives you a certain amount of options. You can add that card to your civilization. You can discard a card underneath your wonder board to build a portion of your wonder, or you can discard a card to your discard pile to collect three coins. So there's different types of cards in this game. They're all uh, given, uh, all the cards have got different colors and all the different colors of the cards mean different things. So brown cards, brown cards are raw, raw resources you'll be using to build other types of cards, right? So you've got clay, ore, stone and wood as your basic resources. Grey cards are manufactured goods and again you'll be using these manufactured goods to build other cards. So you've got glass, loom and papyrus as your three main manufactured goods. So blue cards are civilian structures, red cards let you improve your military and then purple cards are guild cards, right? When you play a brown card or a grey card you'll, you'll put it into a, the upper left hand corner of your wonder board and that provides you with materials each turn that you can use to build other cards so some resource cards give you a choice of which ones you can use and you can also blag off your neighbors if for a, a paying a certain amount of coin which they can't refuse right so you've got to remember also that there's no resource cards in age three of seven wonders so when you add a, a card to your civilization you look at the upper left hand corner and that'll tell you what resources or what requirements you need to place that card in your civilization so there's also ways to build chains of cards so what you do you look at you look at the upper left hand corner and i'll tell you which card in the future you can use the card in the present for to get a, a discount or build it for free. So blue cards provide you with victory points and they may allow you to build cards for free in the future. So red cards provide you with military options. At the end of each age, what will happen? You'll look at your two neighbours and you'll compare shields, right? And depending on how many shields you've got, you'll get minus or plus number of victory points, right? So green cards, what they do, that's a, this allows you to sort of do a little bit of set collection with regards to scientific research, right? So what you'll do, you'll score points for the breadth and depth of knowledge, right? So you'll get seven points for each set of three different symbols and each symbol scores points for the square of the number of different symbols. So yellow cards, they typically give you an advantage when you're buying or acquiring resources. Uh, purple card, guild cards provide you with victory points at the end of the game. So you can also build your wonder. So if you want, you can slot a card underneath, discard it out of the game, and that allows you to build the wonder. You pay the requirements. You don't have to build your wonder, but they, they, they are quite lucrative when you do it. So once you've gone through all, all the three ages, what you do is you will do a bit of final scoring. You look at your military points, you look at your treasury, so you get one point for every three coins that you've got you look at the points on your wonder board you look at your civilian cards you look at your science cards you look at your you look at your commerce cards and also then you trade in the points that are on your guild cards and at the end of the third stage whoever's got the most points is the winner of seven wonders so what do we like about seven wonders so the first thing that we really, really enjoy about this game is the way it recreates the feel of one of those big, bold civilization games like Nations or, or Through the Ages, all, all that sort of stuff, or Civilization, the other computer game and all that sort of thing. And it condenses it down into basically three decks of cards. And that's amazing. Because So the way this works is you, you start off with a hand of seven cards and you're gradually, over time, building up your civilization and watching, watching it grow out of nothing is absolutely fantastic right so how you organize your civilization is is essentially down to the cards that you decide to pick out of those seven cards every turn you're only going to be able to get 15 cards 
into your civilization at the end of the game right so the second thing that we really really enjoy about this is there are multiple paths to victory you can you could go for the science collection if you wanted you could concentrate on military and doing your neighbors in yeah or you could concentrate on getting your wonder built or you could wait for those skill cards to come out you know so it's, it's it's a really really wonderful thing manipulating your civilization and manipulating your neighbors yeah to try and get those cards that you want that's so desperate so another thing that we really like about this is the way that you've got these asymmetrical wonders cards that are, they're all different so what you're what you're concentrating on is is completely different to the the other players in the game yeah so you might have to concentrate because the wonders are quite lucrative you might have to concentrate on certain things whilst you're juggling your science and you're juggling your resources as well so we love asymmetrical goals in games yeah so another thing that we really like about this is the way that you retain all the resources that you collect you know it's not like a say i don't know settlers of Catan where you might you're spending that wood and you're getting rid of it one of the things that's difficult for new players to grasp in this game is that you don't spend the resources it's not expendable so once you've got that wood in your civilization it will continue to give you wood no matter what yeah so that's, that's wonderful so resources they're not finite in this game and that is absolutely fantastic we love that so another thing we could go on about this all day so the final thing we're going to talk about you know the, the most important thing we, we really like about this is the drafting mechanism in at the beginning of each each turn so you'll be choosing a card passing them on and you're not only thinking about what you want you're also thinking about what your opponents want and how you can you know you think that well julia over there she's going for that science and i've got the the one that she needs to complete that that set so even though i don't need it i'm going to take that from her so there's a bit of take that in this as well and that, that we really do enjoy it enjoy the draft and it's exciting you never know which cards you're gonna gonna come into your hand and you, you know you're hoping that the person next to you is going to gift you that card that you want whilst you're stitching them up in the next turn right so what don't we like about seven wonders so the first thing and the most annoying thing about this is it's very very difficult to teach new gamers this game because it's all icon based and it's very very confusing i mean we had to learn through uh, well, rodney smith's wonderful uh, now old really old video that where he goes through it from in, in very very simple terms and it, it just clicks after that so you know if you if you want a, a detailed rules tutorial then go and watch the watch it played tutorial this is still the best one even though it's like mega old it's about eight years old it's still the best one to watch and that's that really does put new players off because a lot of people are just sitting there at the beginning going i don't get this i don't understand it i don't get it so that's a that's a real down it would hit the table every day if we could could get the new players to play it, but we can't because it's all icon based so another thing that we find frustrating about this is the fact that it doesn't work with a lesser player count so the two player game is botched yeah there's no point in playing that you might as well get seven wonders dual three players it's it don't really work very well four players that don't work what you want ideally is seven six or seven players to play this because the, the cards will go further there's going to be more cards in the game because you're going to be taking cards out if there's less players so to get the full experience you want seven players maybe six minimum you know but it still works with five but if you go any lower than that you're going to be losing all, the, all these cards and it just doesn't work that well so another thing that we find frustrating about seven wonders is you're only really worried about the two muppets that are sat next to you right so you might if you're playing with seven you, you're going to have people over the other side of the room and they're not really going to affect you that much because they're too far away the drafting doesn't really get to you and the military aspect of this game you're only talking about the, the two people next year and, and the resources that you can pinch off them is only going to come from those two people so <sighs> there's not really any way around that you're just gonna to have to live with that and you know it would be nice if we could adapt the rules some in somewhat to bring the people in the other side of the room over to you so you could punch them in the face as well so another thing that we find frustrating about seven wonders is the wonders aspect isn't essential you don't have to do it it's not mandatory you don't have to build your wonder and you know for a game that's all about seven wonders where you don't have to worry about your wonder it's a bit it's not if the theme falls apart there somewhat you know it's, it's a, we would have we would have preferred it if you had to get your wonder built or you know at least concentrate on a little bit more so um yeah and the final thing that we're going to talk about that we don't like this sounds like we don't like the game but we love the game but the final thing that we don't like about seven wonders is the random card draw may mean that you are not going to get anywhere near the cards that you need in your hands especially in the later portion of the game but especially with larger player counts like this. if you're playing with seven players the cards are going to be spread out and the card that you want might be way way over there somewhere you know it might be far away by the time it comes around it's gone so it's in higher player counts there's going to be more variety of cards there can be more duplicates of cards but you, you may still miss out on the cards you want just because the, of the, the random card draw so to summarize is seven wonders still worth playing in 2019 and beyond 
I've got to say, yes, this is a five-star game, no doubt about it. We love Seven Wonders. We loved it since the day it was made. We still play it now. It's a wonderful, wonderful game. There's the Leaders expansion. You've got the, uh, the the extra Wonder Boards, the Armada. You've got the, the Babel expansion. There's another expansion. I can't remember the name of it now. But you've got the, the packs of promo cards that were released. The, 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 the five, was it the five-year anniversary ones? All oh, the seven-year anniversary, the seven-year anniversary packs of cards. So you could throw it all in or you can take it all out. And it's, um, it's all modular and it really works really well. You know, we're not going to talk about the expansions, but maybe we'll leave that for another day. But we impl implore you to take a look at Seven Wonders. Once you can get over the icon based hurdle, then it really does open up and it really does give you that epic feel whilst condensing an epic game down into three decks of cards, three decks of cards. So, yeah, that's Seven Wonders. It's a five star game. If you're new here, then please consider subscribing to our channel. Leave a comment in that section down below, and we'll see you next time.